Smoke. He is the senior writer, college football at ESPN.com. Also, Sirius XM host Adam Rittenberg joins us on 365 Sports with Paul Craig, and I'm David Smoke. Adam, if I if I brought this up, you have the NIL, which is now we're kind of know what that is, but who knows sometimes what it is. Transfer portal, the Pac-12 media talks, realignment, Deion Sanders. How would you uh, the, the eventual scheduling, scheduling college football's uh, change in how many teams make the playoff? How, how do you put those in? Not all of them in order, but how do you like maybe prioritize them? Yeah, it's a lot going on. Great to be with you guys. I, I think it's all about you know the timing of things. So obviously the Deion Sanders story and everything that's gone on at Colorado is is, is sort of the, the most urgent um, topic. Although Pac-12. You know, media negotiations are ongoing and have been ongoing, and until they're resolved, will be will be a uh, a topic. I mean, NIL and the portal, and you know, even playoff expansion until it goes into effect are are sort of always floating out there. But you know, there's not a, a whole lot of you know new or, or urgent elements around those stories. Where uh, certainly Colorado and uh, 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 you know kind of what's going on there is is. Uh, has just generated a lot of attention as have the media negotiations in the Pac-12. Adam, even if Deion Sanders gets the 10 best players in the portal, and that that's a big thing, he still needs, after that, probably about 30 more, right? So is this just about completely turning over the roster, and is he taking – a, a, a calculated risk that may not be calculated enough because what if he's just trading one guy who can't cut it at Colorado for another guy who can't cut it at Colorado? Yeah, and that's the, what coaches have been telling me. He's trading backups for backups, and in some cases, they're losing players that they wanted to keep. I, I, I talked to um, you know the father of, a, of one player today who they very much wanted to keep, and you know in his you know post spring meeting, his exit meeting after spring ball you know, things went south and he ended up going in the portal. So they are losing guys that, they, that they've that they at least been uh, – position coaches want to keep. Deion Sanders is another story in some of these meetings that I've been told. But they are, they are in a, a very interesting spot because the spring portal is not filled with, you know, for sure power five level starters. And so they're really going to have to hope that some of these players who, for whatever reason, didn't become stars at their last school – will will be on the field, be constant, consistent contributors and stay healthy because yeah, there's gonna be a numbers issue for them most likely. Um, you know, I don't know how, how dramatic the the actual numbers will be when the season rolls around in terms of bodies, but who you're putting on the field is going to be very interesting, especially with the schedule being as tough as it is. And you know, coaches have said that you know the spring portal is not the time that you want to be building your roster. It's a place to fill a few spots here and there. That's certainly not what's going on in Colorado. Uh, after their own spring practice wrapped up. Adam, earlier this week or just a couple of days ago, you had both of the uh, big Iowa schools uh, dealing uh, with the latest chapter of, of gambling and college athletes, and we had you know, Alabama's baseball coach, obviously, and, and other stories here and there. But what kind of a sense do you get for how big of a threat this feels like for those uh, in charge of these universities, coaches to presidents? What kind of a, of, a, of a dark cloud is kind of starting to emerge in regards to all this, if any? Well, again, I think it's uh, there's a couple of things. You know, how many of these incidents directly involve the teams that they're um, you know either associated with or on? You know, obviously the Alabama case seemingly is a much more serious situation because you had the head coach who was you know directly involved in in what was going on. You know, the Iowa Gaming Commission has said that none of these cases involving Iowa or Iowa State are are you know kind of direct involvement type cases. Doesn't mean there's it's not sole concern. You know, you can't gamble as a college athlete. Um, but it's going to be very difficult, I think, to uh, you know sort of police this, given how easy it is for uh, people in states where where sports wagering is legal uh, to do so through apps. It's it just it's really really easy to do that. And so um, how extensive this goes and and the punishments and all of that are going to be really interesting. But I, I know that athletic departments uh, you know have taken this seriously, but maybe have to uh, you know point to what's gone on at Iowa or even Alabama. And say, hey, you you know, you can't just get away with this and expect nobody to notice. People are monitoring, um, and uh, and I'm sure this is not the last uh, incident that we'll hear of. Uh, you brought up uh, realignment, and I brought up TV deals and all that. And and you know, it's been a long process 
for what's happening within the Pac-12. And it does seem like at least more and more that whether it's the Big 12 looking at them or maybe a team or program or two in the Pac-12 looking at the Big 12, how, how do you look at all of this of what they're having to deal with with Klyovkov in the Pac-12? Well, again, I, I think everyone needs to remember that the initial Pac-12 negotiating window would be now or heading into the summer, this summer. It obviously opened early, but, you know, normally media negotiations are, are completed about a year out. And so, um, you know, just because the Big 12 opened theirs and re- did theirs early doesn't necessarily mean the Pac-12 is, is on the verge of, of, of falling apart. But I also thought we'd have some more news by now. I think there's other factors in play. Um, whether it's dealing with streamers uh, as opposed to traditional media outlets, their negotiation timelines might be a little bit different. There are other uh, media negotiations going on with, uh, w- with some of these potential partners, other properties um, that, that, that might be taking priority over, over what's happening with the, with the PAC 12. Um, you know, again, I think there's certainly concern in that it hasn't been finished, but I also, you know, you could say if you're George Klyakov, listen, we weren't supposed to be done until, you know, August of, of 23 anyway. So uh, the next few months are going to be important. Um, but I, I also just think there's been a lot out of the big 12 about, you know, th- this is, this is true. And this is what this school wants. And this is what the other school wants. It just hasn't been proven true. I mean, there's a lot of bad information coming out of the big 12. So until things are, are, are s- settled one way or the other with the PAC 12 and, you know, we, we have, a, I think this has been one of the dumbest stories guys, you know, that in, in my career, and I haven't really been covering it that close. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but just the amount of this, this is a possibility and this school's interested and yep. maybe it isn't. And, and then it, it's just a dumb story. That's just how I feel. Yeah, and and it, I, I kind of I look forward to us moving on one way or the other with it. No kidding. Yeah. I, it's been great because there's, it's been interesting with some of the storylines, but you're right. It, whatever the decision is, Thank God, then we can move on and all enjoy the rest of our lives. Yeah, yeah Adam, yeah. Uh, it is, though, like the Pac-12 also at the university president level hasn't handled it great either because every time no. somebody is asked about it, they give like an arbitrary deadline and then they don't meet it and they ask like, why? Well, I, I mean, who said the deadline? Like, you did. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, if they had never said that, if they had said from the beginning, like, look, like there's no real deadline on this. We're we're fine. That maybe some of the panic or the speculation wouldn't be happening. That's a great point. And yeah, I think the overall messaging from the Pac-12 has been poor. You know, the fact that we haven't heard anything from George Klyovkov, who was a very open and 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 talkative commissioner his first year or so on the job. And I get it now. You're in these negotiations. You don't want to say the wrong thing, but you know they haven't pushed back on a lot of things. Um, which I think has been a mistake. They've had presidents that have talked out of turn or, or, or like you said, set deadlines that weren't really deadlines. And so, um, you know, again, and, and one thing that I'll point out that a, a, a conference commissioner told me late last year is that there's a concept called deal fatigue where, you know, you're talking and you're talking and you're talking and people just get tired of it. They want to move on, like kind of like what we're talking about right now. Uh, and, and it still hasn't been done. I mean, certainly the situation – with, with Disney um, and, and, you know, could impact ESPN. But I also think ESPN wants Pac-12 uh, football in that late window. So it's going to be fascinating to see they're going to present a deal. Before anybody leaves the league, they're going to present a deal. We'll see if that deal satisfies members that certainly could have options in the Big 12. And then at that point, if it does, we'll see how long the grant of rights is. I think the grant of rights in the Pac-12 will be on the shorter side. I'd be very surprised if it's any longer than six years. I think it could be in the four to five year range, but uh, and then and then you'll see if there's expansion after that. So I think that's probably the order of things: media deal presented, agreed upon or not agreed upon, and then if it is agreed upon, you're going to have a short grant of rights reached, and then likely expansion in the Pac-12. Yeah, deal fatigues. What a lot of people pointed to with the Big 12 settling with Texas and Oklahoma, just getting tired of the jostling yeah. of what it would take to get them, you know, on their way. And, uh, and eventually they settled, and, and I think all parties ended up happy. But that was a big part of yeah, it was deal fatigue. Is uh, I think Mac Rhodes pointed out to us, or at least somebody somebody had pointed out to us. What are your thoughts? Um, 
as conferences kind of find their footing here moving forward, whatever it is that happens with the pack or not, um, we know the Big 12's constantly scouring the landscape because that's just what they put out there themselves. But you said yesterday, Mike Oresco of the American Athletic Conference posted a lengthy essay uh, talking about the Power 5 term. And this is a guy that at one point was talking about the Power 6, but now he doesn't like the Power 5, and he's hoping people would shy away from that. Uh, just what are your thoughts on kind of that golf and the way that people like Oresco are having to try and combat that? And knowing, Adam, that, you know, expansion – Talk or not, like, that's a conference that's already been poached and could very well be poached by the pack uh, if, the, if you know, SMU or Tulane or somebody were to be on their, their radar moving forward. Right, yeah, I get Mike's point of view and, and, and certainly his frustration, and it, he's right about a lot of things he said. It's largely media-created, and it does create that, 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 um, that gulf, as, as you point out. But, um, it, you know, it, it is real. It, and, and, and it's become more real because of the last realignment. I mean, you've had some of the top brands, you know, in his league that are now going to be part of the Big 12. Uh, you you mentioned SMU and Tulane, who could be on the Pac-12 radar, San Diego State from the Mountain West. Maybe other teams from out there could be on the uh, Pac-12 or, or Big 12 radar a, a, as well. So, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I think it's, it, it, other than Boise State, I don't know if there's been a brand in the group of five that has resonated to a very high level that is not now headed into the power five. Houston had that breakthrough for a little while. Cincinnati and UCF have had that breakthrough. They're obviously headed to the, the big 12 um, Boise state, just because of its geography and some of the other things institutionally, it's been hard for them to make that jump. San Diego state's close though. San Diego state, I fully expect to be a member of the big 12 or the PAC 12 in the next three or four years. And so that might be the last one. And, and I think unfortunately for, for Mike and the other conference commissioners at that level, um, it, you know, that term and those those categories, the, the way those things are categorized is not going to go away. Yeah, Mac Rhodes, in fact, when we had him on Tuesday, we're lucky to get him, not lucky, we're fortunate to be able to have him on as much as we do, but he mentioned that Oresco, when he was at the Big East in the transition to uh, what became the American, was fighting for Power Six as the, as the Big East. So it's a different perspective base, but I love the fact he's fighting for his constituents and or his conference of the four teams tc uh excuse me of the four teams ucla usc texas and oklahoma adam who do you think is better positioned for the transition into the new conference mm, that's a great question um you know i think usc if they can win the pac-12 and get into the playoff this year which a lot of people think they will um they'll, they'll be in a pretty strong place even though it's such a a dramatic shift going to play mostly in the Midwest, you know, being in a school in LA, I would have said Oklahoma because Oklahoma had been so consistent. Uh, but I think Oklahoma had some, some real work to do on its roster, especially on the defensive side to successfully make that transition. I think it's going to be tough for UCLA. And I think it's going to be tough for Texas if they're, if they don't take a step forward this season, this is a huge year guys for Texas because there's, the Big 12 is wide open, and they can win the Big 12. They, they might have the most uh, talented roster in the Big 12, but they haven't done it in so long, and there's so many doubts around, you know, can Steve Sarkeesian, who's a great offensive coordinator, actually achieve at a high level as a head coach? But, um, you know, that, so I think there's definitely urgency of those four. Uh, there's urgency for all of them, but maybe more so for USC and Texas to win their conferences before making those moves to the SEC and Big 10. Adam Rittenberg, ESPN.com. Adam, great. Thanks to have. Uh, thanks for your time to be a part of our show as always. We appreciate it. Have a great week. Thanks, Smokey. Appreciate you it. Too. Have a great day, guys. Adam Rittenberg of ESPN.com with us.